In today's video, we're talking about PDF reporting, and I'm going to show you a very flexible approach to generate PDF documents using HTML templates. And for the HTML templates, we're going to use the powerful Razor syntax that we have in ASP.NET Core. We're going to generate a PDF report for an invoice. I have an invoice factory service that's using Bogus to generate a fake invoice. The invoice has an invoice number, when it was issued, and when is the due date. It also has the seller and the customer address and an array of line items. We're going to start out with generating just 10 line items, but I'm going to increase this later in the video to show you how the PDF report is going to look like when we have multiple pages. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The first thing I want to do is to solve the HTML template. And I said that we were going to use the Razor syntax and ASP.NET Core views to generate our HTML dynamically. Razor syntax and views in general are natively available inside of an MVC application, but what I'm running here is an ASP.NET Core web API. I'm going to show you how we can take an MVC view and convert it into an HTML string inside of our ASP.NET Core Web API application. I'm going to use the Razor Templating Core NuGet package to achieve this, and this library is open source, and you can take a look at the source code on GitHub. It's available from .NET Core 3 and upwards, and it supports the various .NET application types. It also has extensive support for Razor View features. We're not going to be diving into that aspect as much, but this is definitely a powerful library that you can use to generate HTML strings using Razor Views. So let's see how we're going to use Razor Templating Core. I'm going to start by installing the respective NuGet package. So let's look for Razor Templating Core and I'm going to install the latest version of this library and then I'm going to create my Razor view. Let me add a new folder in my solution and let's call it views. Inside of it I'm going to scaffold a new view using Visual Studio. You can manually create this file if you want to, and let's use an empty Razor view. I'm going to give it the name of invoice report, and this is the empty view that we get. Why are Razor views so powerful? Well, you can pass in a strongly typed model, and for example, let's use our invoice contract as the model for our Razor view. And what this allows us to do is to access the model instance and then render it inside of our Razor view. Razor views have support for HTML. So what I'm going to do, for example, is create an h1 tag, and I'm going to say that this is my invoice number, and then I'm going to use my model, which is my invoice class, to render the invoice number value. The syntax for this is using an at sign, then you can access the model object, and then you can access the object's properties. Let me also add a paragraph for the issued on date. Let's say issued date, and I'm going to render the issued date from my model. You also have the ability to format your output, so I can say to string, and then specify a daytime format that I want to use, and I'm going to use the best format out there, which is day, month, and then year. Any other format is poorly readable in my opinion, but let's not go down that rabbit hole. We have our Razor view here. Now let me show you how I'm going to use it. I'm going to expose a get endpoint on my API. Let's call it the invoice report, or rather let's give it a route of invoice report. I'm only going to need my invoice factory, which is a singleton service and I'm going to use it to create an invoice instance. I'm going to say invoice and then invoice factory and create me a new invoice. And now I'm going to use our Razor templating core library to generate my HTML string. So I'm going to say await and then I'm going to access the Razor templating engine. This is a static class that allows me to render my Razor view and I just need to specify the view name. I'm going to specify the full path, which is my views folder, and then the invoice report CSHTML view. Then I can pass in a view model, which is my invoice object, and this is enough to get back an HTML string. Alternatively, you can inject the iRazor template engine service if you want to use dependency injection, I'm going to use the static class because it is much simpler. And let's just return our HTML content for the time being from this endpoint, and let's test this out to see how it's working. 
let me send the get request to our endpoint and you can see that we get back an HTML string. If I head over to the preview tab, it's going to start making more sense. Here is our H1 tag containing the invoice number. And then we have the two paragraphs with the issued on date and the due date. However, we are still working with an HTML string and I promised that we would be converting this into a PDF document. So let me show you how we can do this. So we have our HTML template in place. We are able to generate it dynamically using our Razor views. And now all we need is a library that supports HTML to PDF conversion. My favorite library to do this is Iron PDF. And that's what I'm going to install. So I'm going to look for Iron PDF. And here is the Iron PDF library. I'm going to install the latest version. When you install this library, you're going to get a short readme file with a simple C sharp code example. And this is actually what we're going to use to generate our PDF file. And it also contains some documentation links if you want to learn more about Iron PDF. There are many libraries that support HTML to PDF conversion, and some of them work better or worse than the others. Iron PDF is one of my favorites because it's easy to use. It's very reliable. It has excellent documentation and it has amazing performance. The one downside, although it's not really a downside, is that you're going to need a license to run Iron PDF. You should be able to use it without a problem in your development environment. But if you want to just try it out, you can easily get a 30 day free license from their website. I'm going to pull the Iron PDF license from my application settings, and I'm going to set the license key on the ARM PDF license object. And now I'm ready to start using ARM PDF. So I'm going to start by creating an object that's going to render my HTML string into an HTML document. And this will be my Chrome PDF renderer. And now I can generate my PDF document with just one line of code. And all I need to do is say renderer, render HTML as PDF, and we're going to pass in our HTML string. Since this is a file, I'm also going to declare it inside of a using statement so that it is properly disposed when I complete my endpoint. And what you can do here with ARM PDF, or rather the PDF document, is really interesting. For example, you can decide to save the PDF document as a file on your system, and you just need to provide the file name and the file path. The Iron PDF library has some very interesting features. For example, I can access the PDF document class. This has a few static methods, and one of those is merge, and this allows me to take in a few PDF documents and merge them into a single document. In this example, I'm providing the same document twice, but the output of this is a new PDF document that contains all of the documents that I passed in as an argument. And this could be very interesting if you need to merge together multiple PDF documents to generate your invoices or your monthly receipts. But what I'm actually going to do here is return the PDF document as a file from our endpoint. And I'm going to use the PDF document object to access the array of bytes using the binary data property. I'm also going to specify the content type as application slash PDF, and I'm going to provide a file name for our download. Let's generate this dynamically. This is going to be an invoice with this invoice number, and I'm going to give it the proper file extension. So let's test out this version of the endpoint that is doing HTML to PDF conversion using Iron PDF. Let's call our endpoint again to get back the invoice report. And this time I'm getting a PDF file in the preview in Postman. And you can see that it contains the invoice number, the issued on date and the due date. And this is our HTML converted into a PDF document. If I go over to the headers in our response, you can see that the file name is correctly generated and it contains the invoice prefix, the invoice number, and the PDF file extension. However, this example is too simple for you to grasp how powerful this approach is. So let me show you what we can actually do with Razor views and HTML to PDF conversion. I'm going to update the Razor view to render the entire invoice, including the company details and the line items. And here's what that implementation could look like. I'm also stylizing our Razor view using Tailwind CSS. This is a CSS library that contains a lot of utility classes that you can use to stylize your content. Now, let me walk you through what I'm doing here, and I want to highlight some of the interesting features of Razor Views. For example, you can perform calculations 
inside of the Razer Views. Here I'm going over the line items on the invoice, summing the line item price multiplied by the quantity to get my subtotal. But I'm also formatting this into a string using the currency format and I'm specifying the culture info which is going to determine which currency I'm going to display. I'm doing the same for the total. This calculation could be different from the subtotal but in our example it is the same calculation. And because the razor views are rendered on the server we can do calculations like this inside of the view itself. Let me show you some other things that are going on here. So I mentioned that I'm using Tailwind CSS and I'm just adding this as a script from the Tailwind CSS website and I made some updates to how I'm rendering my invoice. So we still have our invoice number inside of an H1 tag, the issue done and the due date inside of the paragraphs, but I also added the seller information and the bill to company information. And below, I'm rendering the line items for the invoice voice by using a for each loop inside of my razor view. So this is a really powerful concept in ASP.NET Core. You can iterate over your objects inside of the view and generate markup for each row. In this case, I'm not using a table format, I'm using divs, but you can easily modify this to use tables and table rows. Lastly, at the bottom of our template, I'm rendering the subtotal and the total. So let me show you what this looks like when we try it out. I'm going to send a request again, and this is our updated and stylized PDF report. So you can see I'm getting the invoice number, the issued on and the due date. Here is the seller company information and the bill to company information. I rendered them as two divs containing 50% of the available horizontal space and I added a small gap between them. Then you can see our line items over here rendered in what might look like a table, although it's really not a table in the HTML template. And lastly, you can see the subtotal and the total at the bottom of our report. Let's make a few more updates to our invoice. I'm going to change the invoice factory to generate 100 line items instead of 10 to show you what a multi-page PDF report might look like. And let me also update the invoice report razor view. For example, let's change the background from a gray to some sort of green to make it more obvious that the stylization using Tailwind CSS is actually working. So let's start this and let's see what the report is going to look like now. I'm going to send another GET request to our backend and this time we get the updated report and you can see that the background color is properly applied from our template. But if I keep scrolling down, you're going to see that we get a multi-page report because we have more line items that we can fit on a single page. The blank space you are seeing here are page breaks between the pages in the output PDF document. And all of this is made possible by the ARM PDF support for HTML to PDF conversion. I really think it works exceptionally well even with complex HTML templates like this one. If we take a look at the template for a moment, you can see I'm using the Flexbox approach to organize my elements. I'm also adding padding or spacing between the elements inside of my Flexbox. I can set the corner rounding, the text size and the font weight. And all of this gets rendered from my HTML template into a PDF document using Iron PDF. Let me know in the comments what you think about HTML to PDF conversions. Have you used this approach before or do you use something else to generate your PDF reports? Also, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons on this video. And until next time, stay awesome.